Okay, in this problem, we're given S of n is given by this formula, it's geometric in nature. And we want to find an expression for U sub n. Well, let's think about what S sub n means. I know if I have, let's pretend I have S1 and I want to get to S2. In order to get to S2, I have to add U2. Similar, if I want to get to S3, I have to add U3. So for example, S2 plus U3 is equal to S3. So U3 is going to be S3 minus S2. Well, if I generalize that idea, I can say then that UN is going to equal to SN minus S sub N minus 1. Plug it in the values that I know for these. I know that this is the same as saying 7 to the n minus a to the n over 7 to the n minus the quantity of 7 to the n minus 1 minus a to the n minus 1 all over 7 to the n minus 1. And this is u sub n. That is a part completed. And that can be as messy as that. When I switch over to b part now, I need to find the first term in the common ratio. Well, if I want to find the first term, that means I want u sub 1, which means that n equals 1. Plug that in. So u1 is equal to 7 minus a over 7 minus, well, 7 to the 0 minus a to the 0 over 7 to the 0, which that's 1 minus 1 is 0, and that goes away. And I get 7 over 7 minus a over 7, which is equal to 1 minus a over 7 is u sub 1. I also want to find what it says it wants me to find the common ratio. So in order to find the common ratio, I know if I have u1 and I times it by r, I get u2. So if I can find u2, and then I can find r. Using again my general formula, let n be 2. So u sub 2 is going to equal to 7 squared minus a squared over 7 squared minus, here's uh, u1, which I can plug in here, is going to be 7 minus a over 7. Simplifying this, what do we get when I get this? I'm going to multiply by uh, 7 over 7. Or is there an easier way to do it? Well, let's just go for this. 7 squared minus a squared over 7 squared minus 7 squared minus 7a over 7 squared. Okay, so simplifying this, I know I have a 7 squared on the bottom. 7 squared minus 7 squared is 0, and I have a negative a squared plus 7a, and this is u2. Now, in order to find r, I know it's got to be u2 over u1, or maybe it was u3 over u2, and so on. I know this one. So if I take u2, so r is going to be minus a squared plus 7a over 7 squared divided by 1 minus a over 7, which is our u1 term from up here. So doing some algebra on this, I know that I have a is, factor of the a, I get 7 minus a when I do that. Let's switch it around. Over 7 squared times, well this is 7 over 7. 7 on the top, 7 minus a on the bottom. And I can cancel that with that, this with this, and I end up with r being a over 7. So that completes, we have u1, and we have r. And the last bit says determine the sum of to infinity of the sequence. Determine the value of a such that the sum of the infinity exists. Well, in order for that to happen, I know for a sum off to infinity, absolute r must be 
this. So in order for that to happen, I want this to be, I want a over 7 to be bigger than 1. And so a must be bigger than 7. Now, let's look up here for a moment. It's given by this. Okay, and then finally, the next part is, what is the sum to infinity? The sum to infinity, well, I know it's 7n minus a to the n over 7 to the n. Well, if n goes towards infinity, meaning it gets to be a great big giant number, that's, before I do that, I can say 7n over 7n minus a to the n over 7 to the n. Well, that's clearly 1. If n is going off to some great big giant large number, that means an a is less than 7. I can think of it as a over 7 to the n. This value here is a fraction that is less than 1. That means as n gets really large, this value is going to go towards 0. And so then the sum is equal to 1. So the sum off to infinity equals 1.